Welcome back to Good Germs Off-Road Adventures, and welcome back to our Striker Toy Hauler. Today we're going to do a one year review. You know, we've had it about a year, so we're just going to cover the things. You know, what do we like about it? What do we not like about it? Um, what are the good, the bad? What's gone wrong? What upgrades have we made? Uh, we're just going to cover these things. Some of it, you know, might be a little surprising to you. So first we're just going to start off with some of the good things. You know, look at it. Love the way this thing looks. And while you're looking at it, notice the size of that big awning we've got there. Pretty much one of the biggest awnings you can get on an RV. So I tell you, these electric stab jacks, not something I'd ever shop for, but man, I sure do like them. It does make, uh, you know, stabilizing the trailer just super quick and easy. You know, even towing this big rig behind uh, the excursion there, which is probably not meant for something this big and heavy, um, with that suspension under this trailer, it still, it tows really nice. You know, they've put shock absorbers in the suspension of this unit, and that makes a huge difference in the way this thing tows. I mean, it doesn't bounce going down the road when it hits a bump, it just kind of hits them like a car does, so the towing of this is quite nice. So these cap lights... You know, I still don't know why all the RV manufacturers started putting these cap lights on. And at first you think, why do you need these? Well, you really don't. But it does light up the front in case you need extra light while you're hitching up. That little light on the uh, tongue jack just doesn't quite cut it. We've got lights here on the back corners. And of course we have our loading lights up here on the top. Now it is quite bright outside, but I do have the lights turned on, and I believe we're actually seeing it. We have them up here at the top. I can just get over here. We've got another one on this side, over the gas station part of the, part of the unit. And these lights, they're not very big, but they are bright. We also got uh, lights under the awning here that run the full length. Now, I really like these, but these are going to come up in some of the... Uh, issues we've had. Now, of course, on the inside of the rig, there is plenty to like. So the first thing, and this is something we actually needed, was the 16 foot, you know, from, you know, from here to there. We needed that clearance to be able to put both of our quads in here, you know, kind of end to end. The beds, you know, I like the beds. They work quite well. I like that the unit has two air conditioners. That's also a plus. The patio on the back door ramp, that's approved. We like that pretty good. You know, this open plan you get with this model, it, it's really nice with the, the, the slide out right here. You know, of course, the bed is actually, or the couch is actually still up against the wall. I didn't bother to put that down. But that couch there is quite nice, and you just have a lot of room. And the chairs, they're comfy. You can take a nap. I'm not kidding. The styling, you know, I think I mentioned this during our first review of this thing, the styling. You know, it's a toy hauler, but it's nice to see some decent styling in a rig like this. Moving on to the kitchen, you know, these countertops, this is not wood, this is not stone. It's a really lightweight, probably a plasticky kind of material, but it's absolutely perfect in a toy hauler. It looks nice, it's durable, and it keeps the weight down. 
the refrigerator in this rig is bigger than our last rig, which I don't know if that's saying much. The one on our last rig was kind of small, but this one's a, bit, a little bit bigger, and uh, that's a you know nice little plus. You do get a television, and it is a smart TV. However, it's a brand I've never heard of, Sensui. Sensui? Sensui. This is a smart TV, but it has, I don't know, like three apps. But it's fine. When we're out, we don't spend much time watching TV anyway. You know, the bathroom is another strong like. For a toy hauler, it is a decent size. You can uh, do all the things you need to do in here. And that shower is going to come up in one of our issues things. You know, and in the bathroom, I do appreciate, you know, you've got your vent with fan. But even more so, I appreciate that it's on a switch on the wall. So you can open it, close it, turn it on and off without having to try to reach there, because I'm tall, I'm 6'4", and I can't reach that. So having the switch on the wall, perfect. And then, of course, coming into the bedroom, you know, having the king bed, which I know it's a mess, we've got tables and stuff on it right now, but having the king bed with decent storage, you know, that's a huge plus. The king bed, look, if you're ever in an RV and you don't, have a king bed for many years, and then you do have the king bed, even though it's the RV king, it is a big difference. So when we're camping, you know, I'm not a very late sleeper. I typically don't sleep in. I get up as soon as that sun comes up, the trailer lights up just a little bit, I'm up. You know, it could be six o'clock in the morning. I am up and I am out. But with this trailer, you know, you can't tell by the super right there. I've got the door open and the sun's beating on us pretty good. But when you've got this trailer, all the blinds down, we even have the little shades in the door windows. Um, when it's like that, it is dark in here. And I've actually slept in two, three hours almost every day that we've camped in this unit, more than I would ever sleep in camping. So, you know, I've probably had the best sleep camping in an RV in this rig than I ever have. And the unit we had before this, had it for 16 years, had another one before that. Same thing, don't really sleep all that well, but man. I do get a good night's sleep in this unit here. And before we move on to some of the not-so-nice things, I do like the ceiling fan. It doesn't really move a lot of air, but it moves a tiny bit of air, and that's better than no air, right? Sure. Moving on to some of the things that we don't like. Um, the first one, I'm going to start off with the first one because it is the worst and the kind of the biggest pain in the rear end, is the uh, water storage tanks. So I'm on the back side of the unit for two reasons. First, it's in the shade. The sun's coming up and it's bright and it's going to get hot because it's, you know, it's summertime. And two, this is the side where the tank's dumping lives, you know. Storage tanks. Yeah, so fresh water. We've got a 90 gallon tank and a 10 gallon water heater, so that's essentially 100 gallons. Perfect. That's you know something you need when you're off grid camping, which is what we do probably 90% of our camping with these days. Um, black tank under the toilet, you know, 50 gallons. That's really nice. Our last trailer had a 30 gallon tank, which was very shallow, and that very shallow tank always causes us problems. But we've got a 50 gallon tank under the toilet. Perfect. Gray. Yeah. Well. The spec sheet on this unit says 30 gallons. I'm not sure how true that is. What it also doesn't tell you is that it's 30 gallons split between two tanks, not just one. So you've got the bathroom sink on its own little tank and the shower and the kitchen sink are on another tank. And I'm guessing combined that's 30 gallons. Look, I, I don't know where, what kind of math you know, cruiser RV on these strikers, what kind of math they were doing. If you've got 100 gallons of fresh and you've got 80 gallons of wastewater holding, where does the other gallons go? On top of that, why do you have a bigger black tank than you have bigger gray? I, it just doesn't make sense. So, you know, we had to go buy one of those totes that you can take with you to, just for the gray, to have an extra place to put gray. So if we're somewhere that we can't, evacuate that tank we have to take that extra tank have it dumped or actually carry it full of wastewater to a dumping station so that was a big miss and it's i'm not even sure how if it could be fixed on this unit um 
but that's a really big miss on uh, Cruiser RV's part. Um, 2023 models, if you look at the specs, they've changed the tank configuration. You know, they've kept the same fresh water. They downsized the black tank to, I think, 30 gallons. And then they've increased the gray to, I think, 65. Um, this is not, this wasn't a new model for 2022. So I don't know why they didn't do that immediately or they just didn't do math properly. That would have been nice. Um, that's a big one, you know, big miss guys, come on. All right, and the other reason we're on this side is so we can see the slide out. If you're familiar with slide outs on RVs, you'll recognize those tracks, top and bottom, which are probably not in frame there. Those are the Schwintech by Lippert, and they're junk. I, I don't know how else to say it. They're junk. Um, they, they work when they work, um, but uh, they go out of sync, you know, end to end, and Anybody that's on one of these units that has a Schwintech slide, they're going to probably have the same problem at some point. Most people have already probably had it more than once where all of a sudden the, the slide out, it's out. You go to pull it in and only one side wants to come in. And uh, it's not fun trying to correct that. And of course, I think we, on our third or fourth trip with this unit, we were getting ready to go and couldn't get the slide out in because only one side wanted to pull in. It took a while, but we did finally get it to come in. And, you know, the, the big key to these is as soon as you hit, a, hit the button to either put it out or pull it in, hold that button. Do not stop halfway. Do not stop partway. Make it go all the way out or in. And when it stops, keep holding it for like another five seconds or so. And if you do that, it should, you know, keep the, the motors aligned. Um, I'm pretty certain we didn't follow that procedure. But, I mean, look, this is just a, it's probably brilliant engineering, good design, Bad execution, I don't know. That seems to be the Lippert way because the, uh, some of the other problems that we're going to talk about again are Lippert. Anybody have these thermostats? Yeah, mine still work, but uh, they are a pain. So these lights, you know, they're, they're nice. I really like them. It's a nice feature. It's a, you know, it's a creature comfort. It's not a necessity, but I do like them. I like them a lot. So we bought the unit roughly May of last year, and uh, we took it out in June. Um, and then I think the next time we took it out was August. Well, between June and August, this light rail, it's plastic. You know, and it just slides onto a bead on the awning. The mount, but the mount for the lights is plastic. Okay, I've got no problem with plastic. It's fine. However, the plastic that Lippert decided to use apparently doesn't like heat. So it had melted and become extremely deformed to the point where it was pinching the lights and shoving them out the bottom, and it was a mess. I've, I've got some photographs, and I'll uh, put them here, but you can see what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, so Lippert did replace those under warranty, and it only took them about six months, I think it was, maybe seven months. And most of that was... Um, them sending the incorrect part, you know, to the dealer several times. And they actually sent a new awning, which made no sense because the awning was perfect. Absolutely perfect. And the light track doesn't permanently attach to the awning. It just slides onto the awning, onto a, onto like a, a bead. So, you know, I, I, again, Lippert, I, good design, probably some good engineering, very poor execution. So the next issue that I'm going to get into was sort of a build quality thing. And we noticed it. We just noticed that um, I think it was the box that I had added where the steps used to be on the rear of the trailer was a little loose. And I was going to go under there and, um, you know, just tighten it up. Maybe there was a loose bolt or a nut or something like that. Well, what I discovered is the perimeter of the coach, you know, the, around the outside, where the floor has threads that come through the floor through the frame. And then there's a lock net that goes from the bottom and holds it to the frame. What I discovered is that every single one of those um, was loose and several were missing. Now, we hadn't gone camping yet. All we did was bring it home and I was just, you know, doing a few things and a few little upgrades here and there before we even went out on our first trip. But yeah, we didn't even go camping yet. And uh, it was kind of a shock to see that they were all loose. So, yeah, the exterior of the coach really wasn't attached to the frame. 
So tightened all those up and replaced the nuts that were missing with the correct nuts, of course. And they've been fine since. I've gone over under the coach and checked them a few times, and they've been fine. But uh, yeah, another, I think, a pretty big miss in quality control at Cruiser RV. So word of advice, when you buy a new unit and you get it home, go under and check all of the uh, nuts and bolts that are under there because I don't believe those things are part of your uh, PDI checklist at your dealer. All right, and one more build quality thing that we came across, and it was um, probably a pretty serious safety hazard. So when the factory installed the generator, they spliced the wires together, you know, generator wires into the coach, you know, 110 wiring. Fine, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, inside this storage compartment that's behind me that you can't see, all the way in the back, there's the junction box. When I went to go wire in the inverter, an upgrade we'll get to later. When I went to wire in the inverter, I opened the junction box and discovered that the wires from the generator um, were stranded wires instead of a solid copper wire, which is fine. Um, however, when they apparently stripped the stranded wire, the stranded, not standard, stranded wires, when they stripped them, they probably cut about half of them out. And then out of the half that's left, only about a half of that was actually inside the wire nut, tying it to the coach wiring. So, um, and, and if there's any electricians out there, tell me what you think. I've got some photographs that we're looking at here. But tell me what you think, any electricians out there. Was this a potential fire hazard? It seems to me like it would be having that much amperage coming through just a few strands of wire. Seems like it was, you know, destined to, to uh, burn us down at some point. But I did contact the dealer after fixing that, the thing with the nuts, sent them photographs, contacted the dealer, talked to them, and they actually took action, went to the factory and talked to them and um, actually did get a response back that they had actually had a few of these complaints and that they were taking it seriously and doing something about it. And the dealer, of course, was they were very nice and they wanted to know if there's anything they could do, was there any cost? And I was like, look, no, I just want you to get the word out. And also for your techs, just have them check. You know, this I know this is not on your PDI checklist, is it's things that shouldn't have to be. But uh, apparently, you know, with the lack of quality control at the factories, maybe it's better now, I'm hoping so. But the lack of quality control at the factories, um, the dealers are left to have to do it. And it's just a couple more things that they should be checking. Anyway, dealer was super nice and they did all those things. I don't believe I actually showed the generator in the review uh, because the panel was locked and I just couldn't be bothered, I think, to unlock it for you. But anyway, so, you know, you've got your own and QG 5500 EVAP in this unit. Plenty of power for this unit. It's really good. Um, but it also has not been without problems and still has problems to this day. And that is it, um, it overheats. Yeah, it, it's air-cooled and it overheats. Um, at this point, what it seems like it's doing is the hot air that blows out of the bottom is getting kind of recirculated into the air intake so it's just kind of recirculating that hot air back through the unit and just getting it really hot um, but it, it it was so bad that at 85 degrees outside you couldn't even run the generator to run your air conditioners at 85 i mean come on 85 is not that hot what was happening is the fuel line which you can see here i've got it wrapped in um, heat wrap now the fuel line was um, vapor locking it was just boiling all of the gas in here from the heat and probably shouldn't do that. So I did, you know, put this heat wrap on here and it has made a big difference. Um, I can now run the generator up to like 95 degrees. When it's 95 degrees outside, it'll still run. But um, look, you should be able to run these at 100 degrees temperature and you just can't run this one at that. At that. And, uh, you know, I've done all the other checks. People have said, you know, the oil's too full. Look, that's not the problem. Been through that. Um, all the electronics are working just fine. The code that you get off of the unit there, because it has somewhat of a computer, the code that it gives you is that it just shut down and it doesn't know why. It just means it turned itself off. Pretty stupid. Um, but yeah, it's just boiling the gas in the fuel line. And uh, it actually fried the original fuel pump. So change the fuel pump, put some heat shrink, uh, not heat shrink, heat sink type, you know, heat shielding. That's what I'm looking for. 
put some heat shielding on the fuel line and it has helped quite a bit. Now, we don't usually go camping when it's over 100 degrees, but it would be nice to be able to, is what I'm saying. And for the final problem we've had, oof, seems like quite a bit for something that's, uh, you know, just a year old. But our last problem that we've had, we're going to go into the bathroom. You should notice that side panel that you see on the left by the door does not match that side panel. There's a very good reason for that. So for that, I want to start off with saying this is a toy hauler. It should be built to go off-road. And in general, it's, you know, it's staying together quite nice. Um, however, the very last trip we went on, most recent trip we went on, we went up our dirt road like normal, arrived at camp, started unloading, and noticed a bunch of, bunch of shattered glass all over the floor. Yeah. It was the shower. So, um, I'm showing some pictures of that here, most likely. Um, it was the glass pane that is the one that's attached to the exterior wall of the coach. And um, it was just in a million pieces everywhere. Got it cleaned up. Ended up using trash bags as a makeshift shower wall for the weekend. It worked pretty fine. Um, worked pretty fine. Well, isn't that a strange way to say that? Worked pretty well. That's better. Um, but it worked pretty well. Got us through the weekend. And then I started looking at getting it replaced. Um, first off, there's no identification on that shower as to who made it. If Lippert made it, if somebody else made it, no clue. I suspect it's yet another Lippert design. Um, but it seems like a pretty bad design. You have glass panes that are just kind of clamped into the frame and if that frame is not perfectly square if there's any shifting in that frame well, I, you know can imagine I can see how it could just shatter that and here's the thing is I think that's a pretty common problem with a shower like that I've uh, went on some message boards and saw where quite a few people had that same exact problem happen some of them they weren't even traveling they were sitting still sitting on the couch relaxing and they heard a big pop in the bathroom and followed by the sound of glass hitting the floor and that same pane of glass shattered and they weren't even moving they were just sitting still so it just seems like a, I mean, it looks neat when you go look at them. It's a nice design. It looks good, but it just seems like a bad design, you know, for something that has to move all the time. But anyway, getting back to fixing it, um, you know, a, a new shower is like 1500 bucks, and I could not find anywhere that I could find that single pane of glass. So what I did is I went and bought a quarter inch thick sheet of um, acrylic plexiglass and cut it to size. And that is now what that glass wall is made out of. And the sheet I bought was big enough to make two. So I put the second one under the bed just in case the other one pops at some point. We can just switch it out and clean up the mess and keep on going. But uh, yeah, that was a bummer. You know, getting out and you've got your, your rig, which some people, including myself, this is kind of like a dream rig for me. And, um, you know, within a year, you're having that kind of problem. That's, that's really disappointing. So I don't know what you can do about that. Maybe a different shower design. I don't know. And I don't know. Maybe some of you all out there have had a shower like that. Same problem. Maybe not. I don't know. I'd like to hear in the comments. What are your comments? They're obviously comments. That's what goes in the comments section. Get with it, man. Wake up. What are your thoughts? Experiences? Have you had problems? If you've not had problems, I'm, you know, curious to know. All right, well, what do you say we get into some more fun topics like, um, you know, some of the upgrades and things that we've done to the unit. So up top, it's kind of hard to see. We added a couple of max air vents to cover the bathroom and the bedroom roof vents. Not sure why it didn't come with those, but uh, we like those. And then I'm going to see if I can capture this. If not, I believe I have some kind of aerial drone, maybe some kind of footage. But right up there on the roof, you see the edge of some solar panels. We've got 400 watts of solar panels up on the roof. Looking down here at the battery section of the coach, you know, the uh, tray or the rack that comes standard in the tongue of this holds two batteries. I wanted more than two batteries, so I made this rack and we have four batteries. Now I went with the 12 volt group 24 batteries because at Costco, they're about 75 bucks a piece. Well, at least that's what they were a year ago. 
and four of those coming out to about whatever that is, you know, less than 400 bucks, and that's with all your core charges. Look, that was a good bargain as opposed to going six volt, which is probably better, but way more expensive. And then uh, the same with lithium, that's even more expensive than that. So this configuration with these four batteries and the solar, it, uh, it works really well for us. We don't lose, we don't lose the juice. We added this rail here, and not just because we liked the rail, but because it came with this really cool barbecue that you could hang on the side of your coach. So we went ahead and added that. And in part of adding that, we actually added to the propane system as well. So here at the propane distribution kind of block, you know, we went ahead and added this quick disconnect port here so we can just plug in our, uh, you know, our propane grill and run it right off the coach propane. We actually put a Y splitter on that as well. So that way we have the propane grill and the Blackstone. That is nifty. For the door windows, they came Lippert Thin Shade ready. So we went ahead and added the Lippert Thin Shades to them. And let's go to the front door and talk more about Lippert once again. Okay, now we're at the front door. And uh, you notice this one is not really doing well. It has fallen apart. Um, thankfully, it's not the window that's the problem. It's the, uh, the shade again. Good design, good engineering, ruined by poor materials and craftsmanship. So I'm going to have to replace this one. Added this nice, you know, handrail from Stromberg Carlson. Just sort of some extra stability as we walk up and down all the stairs. And of course, that's also another big upgrade. But we didn't do that. We had the dealer do that for us. And you know, of course, since we added the more ride steps, we didn't need the old steps, so we found this nice box that was made by the same company there, and we're able to keep some of our goodies stored away in here. It comes out especially handy since, you know, in the toy haulers, you don't really get a lot of outside storage, so it's quite nice. If we ever do the front steps, probably add another box there, too. On the stab jacks, we've added the RV snap pads. We're going to call those approved. We have the backup camera back here. Also, uh, the brand is Furion, but if you know anything about Furion, they're made by Lippert, and it's now on its second camera under warranty, as you would expect. Okay, and I'm doing my best to show this in the storage compartment. You can see right down in the middle there at the back, that's the junction box with the very poorly done wiring. And then to the right of that big block, black box on the right, that is a new or an additional transfer switch and up under there is the inverter that we added so we added a Renogy 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter um, we like it the last coach we added an inverter and it was nice so we did this uh, pretty quick after getting this unit now this is kind of a small upgrade and it looks like it's kind of hard to see because of the light coming through so there's some pretty nasty backlight but on the screen door you know we added this rail, and it's not just a push rail. If you just push the rail down, you can open the door. You know, it's pretty neat that you can do that, use it to pull the door shut, but it attaches, you know, to the handle. Actually, I think it comes with a new handle as well. But that way, you just push down on it, push the door open. We also added the return, um, so the screen door will shut itself. I like that a lot. Yes. Inside the cabinet, I've added some USB charging right there. You can see those blue lights. That's some uh, USB ports. And added some more right down here at the bottom of that cabinet right next to the window. It's just nice having USB tied straight to your 12-volt system so you don't have to have your inverter on or your generator on just to charge your devices. As part of the solar system, you know, here's you have to have a controller to... Uh, actually do the charging of the batteries. So the Renogy system that we bought, we've got this nice big controller here. I think it's called a Rover. And I only think that because I see that that's what's printed on the front of the unit. It says Rover. Uh, but it works really well. And this one came with a little Bluetooth connector thing, so I can actually see what's going on from my phone. It's not needed, but it's kind of neat. Something else we've done, I wouldn't necessarily call it an upgrade, is, it is just... Uh, a thing is underneath the bunk there's no lights and uh, 
you're trying to eat dinner and you've got the couch into or this lower bunk into couch configuration so you're using it you know as a couch and a dining area um, it's hard to see what you're eating or if you're trying to play card games whatever you want to do it's hard to see so we just put a couple of battery powered magnetic lights that just kind of attach up there they're rechargeable um, they work pretty good they light it up for us okay and I think the last little upgrade we've done is I've added this outlet here at the back of the sink um, the only outlet is kind of up under the cabinet and adding that was really easy because under the sink is the water heater and there's an outlet down there for the water heater and I just unplugged the water heater from it plug this into it because we'll never use the water heater on electric mode well I think that's going to do it I think we pretty much covered everything um, I'd really like to know what your experiences are or if uh, you're looking at getting one of these and you're looking for some uh, advice, maybe you're looking for a used one, a new one, whatever. Um, I'd be really curious as to your comments, any experiences you've had. Just uh, put them down in the place at the bottom where you can put words. Anyway, in the meantime, we're going to get this thing ready for some more adventure in here pretty soon. If you wouldn't mind, give us the whole like, subscribe, share, comment thing. It really helps. Ride safe and we'll see you later.